Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings. Today is going to be slightly different. Why? Well, I've been sent two absolutely wonderful pens by Visconti to review. That means I now have a quartet of Visconti's. I have an original Homo sapiens, I have a prototype Homo sapiens, a prototype skylight, which is very kindly sent to me. And now they've sent me a genuine production skylight and a crystal dream. They've also very kindly sent me two notepads, a bunch of ink and a bookmark, which is all very nice. But I think it's going to be difficult to try to get all of these into one video. So what I'm going to do is today give an overview of the differences, capacities and all that side of things with the Viscontis. And then I'm going to try to do a couple of reviews with comparison. So I'll do a comparison of the two skylights. I'll do a comparison of the original Homo sapiens and the Crystal Dream, I think, and a roundup of all four. Hopefully that's going to be useful to some because a lot of people have been questioning exactly what the new Crystal Dream is like, how it compares to a Homo sapiens. I've got some basics for you now and I can run through it all. So that's good, isn't it? Let's go and have a look. Yes. So here we have four gorgeous... Visconti Homo Sapiens pens. A brief introduction for those who have never heard of these things. This was the original Homo Sapiens, the Bronze Age. Called that because it's got bronze fitments. What is different about these pens is they're made out of volcanic lava. Now this one I have been using for well over, I'm not sure if it's seven or eight years I've had this, and it's been used really regularly. It's the most used pen in my stable. But this lava is, as you'd expect with a stony substance, almost impossible to scratch or chip or damage. And this thing, although it's been all over the place, I used to take it daily into Exeter when I was teaching students at Exeter University. It has not got any sort of a mark or abrasion on it. Other pens I put in my pocket with it have been, because they've been marked by this. The Homo sapiens is a delightful pen that has a twist lock. Focus. Come along. Thank you which means you just turn it a little way and it unscrews. It's a sort of a bayonet fit. Originally, all the Homo sapiens pens had lovely palladium nibs, but they've gone on to these solid gold nibs, which I believe are 18 carat. All of them work on the basis that they have a piston inside. I'll demonstrate that with the skylight, with the crystal dream, sorry, because it's easiest to see. What you have is a cylinder here. You can see there's a tube running down the middle of that. And at the end of the tube, there are some seals. As you push that piston down the tube and creates a vacuum behind it, as you can see. I'm creating a vacuum, let it go and it goes back. If you push it all the way to the front, at the front here there's a flaring. And that means the vacuum is released and the pen can suck ink up into that really rather large reservoir. A lot of people think there's a snap when it goes. You listen now and you'll hear a click. 
that click is not the vacuum that is that bit of rubber there hitting inside there but what happens is that it sucks ink up when you shut it down and screw it tightly down there's going to be some ink in this small reservoir here and a massive amount of ink here but the two are shut off as soon as you open it like this then the ink will flow from there into there brilliant if you tip it vertically and then shut it off you'll empty this reservoir so there's no ink in it that means when you get on an aeroplane or anything similar you won't have horrible leaking ink everywhere because what happens is that if you have a pen on a plane and it sits slightly at an angle then what will happen is any air that's in the bottom of the reservoir will expand with the change in pressure and push ink out through the front of the pen that can't happen with these Viscontis because if you've shut all the ink off from the top reservoir it'll be safe a little feature but um, quite a nice one but probably not relevant for most people. What is relevant with most people is how these pens write and how much ink they actually hold. Now, one thing I should say is that people always say vacuum fillers, oh, they're rubbish because you only get half the ink into them. That is sort of true. If you hold pen into an ink well, Or an ink pot and try to fill it it will only fill about a half to two-thirds of the reservoir the reason is simple it's fighting against gravity but if you acquire for yourself a delightful traveling inkwell from Visconti which I've had for some years because they are very useful and I'll show you why they're useful you insert the pen into the inkwell I've put some slightly colored water in this so you can see what's happening and then if I pull back and squirt the piston you'll see it has filled about half of the reservoir but if I do it a second time it has completely filled the reservoir I don't know exactly why it is that you need to pump it twice but I've always found it to be the case so you can see now hopefully, that the reservoir is almost completely full. One question that I have often been asked is if you have one of these pens, do you have to unscrew the end cap so that the ink can flow from the top reservoir into the bottom reservoir every time you use it? No, you don't. All you have to do is make sure that there is some ink in there and it will write perfectly fine. If it runs out of ink, fine, you unscrew it, you release it and the ink will flow. So if you're doing very long, extensive writing, then possibly you might want to do that. Personally, I've never found it to be a great problem. I haven't actually filled that perfectly well. I'm going to put a bit more water in this just to show you can fill it completely. If you hold the thing upside down, then the Visconti will fill absolutely to the brim. Now you can see here, I hope, there is one tiny air bubble there, but basically that is a completely full pen. With a vacuum filler like this, the best way to fill it is by using a travelling inkwell, holding the inkwell upside down, and you will get a massive amount of liquid inside the pen. So going on to the dimensions and proportions, they're all about the same length at about 14 and a half centimetres. In terms of weights, the Crystal Dream and the Production Skylight are the same. They're both 42 in total weight, 42 grams that is. The cap is 17 grams, the body is 25. That's empty. To my surprise, when I weighed my prototype, it was two grams lighter, even though it had some ink in it. 
it was 40 grams in total, 17 for the caps, so the caps are all the same, but the body itself was only 23, which was a bit of a surprise actually, wasn't expecting that. My old Visconti was a rather massive 46 grams, so 4 grams heavier than the others. 18 grams for the cap and 27 in the body itself, which I was surprised at. That's how big and heavy they are. Now let's consider the other thing which is really rather important. As I've, as I've shown, if you fill with a travelling inkwell you can get an absolutely full fill on any of these. So how much ink do they actually hold? To my surprise, this has the biggest reservoir. It's four and this is as best as I can measure it. It's very difficult trying to measure small quantities. You can't really do it in a cup like this. Even though it's got measures on the side, it just doesn't quite hack it. So I used a small syringe that has measurements on it, but I'm not convinced of how accurate the measurements are. But this came out at a massive four and three quarter mils, which is absolutely huge by anyone's standard. When I went on to the skylights, both of these are four and a half, and it was remarkably consistent when I was looking at it. Now I moved to Visconti originally partly because I was fed up with writing long works and having to refill my cartridge converter or replace cartridges too often. And this, I discovered, gave me a huge amount more ink. But measuring it, it's only two and a quarter mils. So it's surprisingly low in quantity compared to the rest of these. These are all four and a half to four and three quarters. That's two and a quarter. What tempted me towards Visconti's originally was the classic elegance of the styling. It was the resilience of the material. How it feels in the hand too, because it's slightly hygroscopic, and that means that as you're writing with it, any sweat that you get on your hands or anything will be absorbed by the material, which is rather nice. I particularly liked the fact that you've got magnets on the top cap. So here, for example, you can see I've got MJ on my other Visconti. I've also got MJ, but it's in black. So I can tell the difference looking down at my shirt as to which pen I've got there. These two have different Visconti labels. So there's a classic Visconti V there, and then this one has a different type of logo, which I assume is something to do with Visconti. I don't know what it is, but useful that they've made them different for me. And the nice thing is you take a magnet, put a magnet on top, and you can replace these with anything really that you like. Visconti has a large number of things such as birthstones, they've got signs of the zodiac, they have letters, there's a number of things you can have to put on them, which is a pleasant little addition. So I like the elegance, I like the style, I like the way the cap works, I love the filling mechanism, which is really effective. And they write like a dream. Both of these two have got palladium nibs. This is the two-tone palladium. It's actually three-tone currently because it's got a little bit of blue ink on it. <laughs> I'll get that away. But very beautiful design, I think. All have the same Visconti pattern. This is a plain palladium, which I think is really rather beautiful. Fine nib. The original Homo sapiens I've got here is a medium nib. And then these two both have gold nibs. They look identical, so I won't bother showing more than one. Very, very beautiful. So there you have it. The basic look of the four Viscontis I have. I'm going to put a little bit of ink in this skylight. I'm going to take some 
Blue Mar, because it's still one of my favourite inks. I love this, it's a really good colour. You see, unscrew the cap, pull it all the way out, get rid of any excess water, put it into the Blue Mar, and it has sucked up about half a reservoir full of ink. And that is the joy of these pens. They are so quick and easy to fill. And I must admit the joy of this one in particular is seeing the ink sloshing around so clearly. Absolutely wonderful. Visconti make some of the loveliest nibs. And this is definitely lovely. Quite a gusher, really wet writer, which I like. It will write in reverse. It's got nice line variation. I'm not going to push it because it's a gold nib and I don't like risking damaging the nib too much but just look at that absolutely perfect how would I compare this with my other Viscontis well we'll come to that a little later in this series so next week I'll be talking about the two skylights and then the week after that I'll do a summary of all of the four side by side including my old original. Look at that ink, isn't that just magnificent? So there you are. Three Bronze Age -y Homo Sapiens one prototype skylight which has been very well used one original homo sapiens that's been very well used and then these two new beasties more on these to come thanks a lot for watching if you enjoyed that don't forget you can go to the bottom and support the channel by hitting the patreon link and if you've got any questions i'll reply very very quickly put them down in the comments section there's also a bell and a subscriber button. Hit the subscriber button and then if you hit the bell, you'll be notified when a new video comes out. That's always good and it helps move me up the algorithms. And apart from that, like it, share it and all those good things. And I'll see you very soon. Take care. <laughs> Cheers. Going away to play now.